عبادك الأيام فتا وتنحي الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى today's benefit is going to be from the kitab Sir Alam al-Nubala by Imam al-Zahbi rahimahullah and the benefit that we will be speaking about is at tazahudu fi dunya a student of knowledge and a scholar they need to come with um, or they should be those who are aesthetic who leave and let go of the pleasures of this world and who turn towards the hereafter ولذلك الإمام الذهبي رحمه الله سر نسير ما أقبح بالعالم الداعي إلى الله الحرص وجمع المال What is worse for a scholar who is calling to the path of Allah than being one who strives for the dunya and gathers wealth Yahya ibn Yaman, rahimahullah, he said He said, Samir'tu Sufyan, I heard Sufyan say Al-malu da'u hadhi ummah Money and wealth is the illness of this ummah Wal-alimu tabibu hadhi ummah And the scholar is the doctor of this ummah فَإِذَا جَرَّ الْعَالِمُ أَدَّاءَ إِلَى نَفْسِهِ فَمَتَى يُبْرَأُ النَّاسَ If the scholar pulls this illness to himself, when are the people going to be cured? Because he's meant to be the doctor. The scholar, he's a doctor. He cures the problem of the ummah. And wealth is the illness of this ummah. So when he starts to take that illness on, when are the people going to be cured? Abdullah ibn Mubarak also said that Sufyan said, Laysa bi faqihim. He is not a faqih. He is not a faqih. Man lam ya'udda al-bala'a ni'ma wal-rakha'a musibah. He is not a faqih. The one who does not consider an affliction from Allah a blessing. And a rakha, joy, as a, a affliction. He is not a faqih. Unless he reaches a point in his life where when Allah afflicts him with something that is harmful, he sees it as a blessing. And when he is going through times of ease and happiness, he sees this as a musibah. This reminds me of a story that I read one time. There used to be a king. There used to be a, there used to be a king. And this king had one of his Bitana. A bitana is a person who advises the leader, who sits with the leader. This individual who used to sit with the leader had a an attitude. Or what was from his norms was every time something happened, he would say, La'alla fihi khair. He would say, Maybe there's good in this. Even if it was something that was an affliction or a, or a problem, he would say, La'alla fi khair, maybe there's good in it. So one day what happened was the king, he got severely wounded on the face. And this Bitana said to the king, as he always did have these norms of saying this, he said to the leader, La'alla fi khair, maybe there is good in it for you. So the leader became excessively angry. The leader, the, the king, 
he became excessively angry. And so he said to him, the wound on my face, the wound on my, my face, how on earth can it be a blessing? How can there be good and khair in it? And so he ordered the guards to arrest this man. And so he was thrown into prison. He spent some time in prison. And so the leader, the king, one day, the king, one day, he went out. The king what? He went out. And when he went out alone, he sneaked away from his guards, the king. He went out to hunt. And he got caught by highway robbers, the king. The highways, highway robbers, they caught the king. And when they caught the king, <coughs> they said to the king, they looked at the king and they realized that he had a severe damage on his face. But they didn't know it was the king. They were highway robbers who wanted to sell him as a slave. But when they saw that he had a big deficiency on him, they knew he would not worth nothing. And so he was freed by the highway robbers. They let him go. He came back to his palace. And so he said to the people, bring back the man who said to me that day that maybe there is good inside the wound. There's good in the wound that's happened to your face. Bring that man over and I need to speak to him. So when he came, he said to him, Wallahi, you were right. Wallahi, you were, you were right because there was good in it. If my face was perfect, I would have been sold as a slave. And the man who was brought out of prison, he looked at the leader and he said, I missed something in the story. When the, when the king said to the guards, arrest him, he said to the uh, king, when he was again being arrested, he said to the king, when the king ordered the guards to come and arrest him, he said to the king, maybe there's khair in me being imprisoned as well. And so when the king told him that there was khair in it, truly, the wound that happened to him, the man said to the king, and there was also khair in me going to prison. Why? Because if, if I wasn't in prison, I would have been with you and I would have been sold as a slave. I would have been sold as a slave because I had no deficiency on me. So what that tells us is that the bafaqi, the person who truly believes in Allah, he knows what? That the ni'mah and the musibah, that this musibah, sometimes you can be afflicted and it can be a blessing. Another story, Abi Qilaba al Jarmi, who was Abi Qilaba al Jarmi, who was a student of Abdullah ibn Abbas. <coughs> he came to visit a man who lost his two hands. He lost his two hands. Abi Qilaba came to him and he came to and he told him, he said to him, maybe there is khair in it. That Allah took your two hands away from you. The man said to Abi Qilab, Amazement be to you. What khair can possibly be in me losing my two hands? What good are you talking about? The man said, I couldn't understand what Abi Qilab was trying to say in the, in the point that he said that me losing my two hands is actually a blessing. There could be khair in that for me. He said, until Yazid ibn Muawiyah sent a messenger to me. And this messenger came running and he said to me, Yazid ibn Muawiyah has appointed you as the commander of the army who is going to fight against Hussein ibn Ali who's reached Kufa. And so he said, I said to the messenger, Oh messenger, you can see my situation on my hands. I'm not able to fight and I cannot lead. And so he said, in my place, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad was placed. And then he said, I remembered the statement of 
Abi Qilaba. That me losing my two hands saved me from killing the son of the daughter of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha's son, Hussein ibn Ali, I was saved from killing him because of the fact that I didn't have my hands. So, لَيْسَ بِفَقِيهِمْ مَنْ لَمْ يَعُدَّ الْبَلَاءَ نِعْمَةً وَالرَّخَاءَ مُصِيبَةً And we will stop there, inshaAllah ta'ala, for this benefit, bi-idhni Allah al-kareem. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.